Alrighty guys, so my Baja Design Lights finally showed up yesterday after waiting for five weeks for these things, dude, five weeks. I guess they're on some crazy back order or something, but anyway, it's all good. We have the two things here from Baja Designs. I have the 20 inch light bar that goes into my TRD Pro Grill. This is the SA conversion kit and clear. There's part number right there. And I have the S2 Sport Reverse Kit part number right there as well with the brackets. That goes underneath the rear bumper right there. And I figured too, since I've already wired up the ditch mounts, um, and now I'm putting in this light bar here in the grill and now the reverse lights. I think it was time for a switch panel kit. So I picked up this one right here from Mick Tuning or Mike Tuning or however you say that. This will pretty much take all of these switches that we would have all individual inside of the cab somewhere and put it into one control panel as well as also organizing everything, all the connections inside the engine bay and putting it all into one place as well. So this pretty much just tidies everything up. I didn't get a lot of stuff from Baja Designs because they are a bag of money, dude. So I got these two things right here because I feel like these are like the most essential as my TRD Pro grill doesn't have that light bar. And I think uh, reverse lighting will be pretty important as well. They do make some vehicle specific things for the 22 Tundra, such as the ditch mounts behind the uh, bumper light. Also the fog light replacement kit too. And of course these things right here, which I just went with these two things right here because like I said, they're pretty pricey, but apparently they are one of the best in the business and uh, we shall see. I have no experience with Baja Designs in the past and uh, I'm sure it's pretty good stuff. Also, I'm sure all these things right here are gonna require a good bit of wiring. One thing I'm not fond of one bit or that good at, but we shall see how it goes. I say we get right to it. So we change the plans. We're doing the install right here in this parking lot because it's an absolutely gorgeous day out today. Also, who remembers the parking lot install days, dude? Before I had a garage, I'd bounce around parking lot to parking lot looking for the best spot to do an install. Good times. But anyways, the main priority for today though is to get the eight gang switch panel kit here installed. Everything else I install, the light bar and the grill, the rear lights, the cube lights, everything else I add to in the future, this here is gonna be the foundation. So as of right now, I have the switch for the cube lights right there stuck to the dash. Didn't wanna do anything too permanent because I always plan to have a switch panel kit put in eventually. All right, so we have some instructions. It's always good. Of course we don't need those, but I'm kidding, we probably do. Uh, positive and negative wire right there. Fuse box. So open this thing up. Try to do it one-handed. Things are always tough. With one hand. There we go. So we have some spare fuses right there, looks like. And we have two 5-amp fuses, two 10-amp fuses, two 20-amp fuses, and then two 30-amp fuses. A connection for positive and negative. I'm not sure which one's which yet, but that's pretty much it. And then you plug in your accessory right there. So we'll throw in you know, our reverse lights, cube lights, whatever we're doing into that right there. Small Phillips head on top, open it up and then tighten it down. It's pretty much all there is to it on that part. And then we have the actual switch panel right here and a mounting bracket too for the switch panel. Awesome. And then some more wiring and some hardware to mount up, mount up the bracket. To find a place to mount up this fuse box right here. And I think what I'll do is mount it right on top of the uh, passenger side fuse box right here, right there on the cover, mounted up right there. I think it'll give us best access to adding other accessories in the future because we have these screws right here that we have to get to in order to open it up and put our accessories in there and then tighten them down. And if I have it somewhere like here off the side, then I can't get any access to those screws right there. I need to make sure this wiring harness right here is long enough, which it seems like it should be, to go from the passenger side to the driver's side. Looking good so far, and yeah, it should be, should be plenty. So we'll push through the firewall and uh, we're good, we're great. Just like that, we have the wire through the firewall. This plugs into the control panel that's on board. First, I'm gonna disconnect the negative terminal off the battery here. I'm not sure if it matters which one goes to battery versus the fuse box, but on the photo, they showed this side right here going to the battery. So we'll just do that. The post right there closest to the fuses. The bottom one right there is the ground. And that one on top is the power, the red wire. Okay, so here's where we're at. We got the power cable hooked up through the relay and then the ground cable as well. So I'm gonna open up the first fuse. This is a very small Phillips head that you need. It's tiny, nice and tight. And then same with the negative, tighten down the negative. I realized my hand was blocking that first shot. My bad, my bad. All right, so the cube lights are in the first 5 amp fuse. And also too, according to the instructions 
you can switch around these fuses. You don't have to leave a five, a five amp in there or a 30 over here. You can put the 30 over here if you want to. You can, you can swap them around, but that's how much power will be allowed to circuit through. My two cube lights draw less than five amps, so just under five amps, so we're good there. Alrighty, so we're almost there. We have it grounded now. We have it attached to the positive terminal on the battery now, and all that's left to do to make sure it all works is supply power using this wiring harness right here to the fuse box itself. The white wire here, we don't have to use. We could wire this to a momentary switch and then we can cycle through the brightness levels of the control panel itself inside the truck. The red wire here goes into the original fuse box in the truck using the supplied fuse tap into a fuse of our choice, either a switched um, or ignition switched fuse or a fuse that has power supplied to it constantly. I'll probably go that route right there. All right, so now everything's hooked up, it's grounded, hooked up to the positive terminal, and then fuse tapped into a fuse that has constant power supplied to it, and then ran that to the fuse box here. So now the fuse panel here has power to it, therefore everything is now hooked up. So now we can try it out and make sure these pod lights work. It has memory to it too, so everything is on right now. So if we turn three of them off, turn the control panel off, and then back on, it does have memory. Everything seems to be working so far, so we have it hooked up to this spot number one. Let's see if it works. Yep, there it is. So sick. That is so sick. Don't mind me, just drilling holes into my dash. Just like that, dude, check this out. So sick, so clean. Bam. That's so legit, dude. So yeah, on button, one by one. Turn them all on, all off at the same time. It's got memory. So we'll replay the last setting, dude. How sick is that? It's not that bright either. That's the brightest setting, so it won't be too bad. It's down there too, so not, like, not like in my line of sight or anything, so. That's perfect, I think. And then we'll throw the buttons in there and that should darken it a little bit too. So yeah, dude, pretty dope. And it's kind of good that it is brighter also because it'll really let me know that my lights are on, which everything I'll have hooked up to that isn't gonna be like for on-road use anyway. So if I happen to leave it on on road, then I'll know that's a good thing. So pretty dang sick, dude. I'm stoked, came out perfect. All right, um, now it's time to put everything back together. A couple little more things to do up in the engine bay and pretty much a wrap. And just like that, dude, the sun's pretty much gone. Winter's coming up, dude. We're pretty much dialed, but a couple little things to do, I guess, to clean up the wiring that goes from the actual fuse box to the inside of the truck to the control panel just kind of hanging right now so i'll zip tie that up somewhere along the way that's about it for that and then um this wire goes into the fuse box drill the hole so i can run in, run the wiring loom into there into the fuse and that's pretty much all for that i ended up moving the entire fuse box over on top that's why there's a hole right here i moved it over so i can make better room for the relay right there so i use those cell tappers drilled it in and then uh, put the cover back on. That's pretty much it for that. So everything's looking good for now. Like I said, I'll zip tie that wire up top right there and that's pretty much it. All right, so I just got back from Walmart, had to pick up a few things, including this battery cable right here because the one the kit came with, the connector fell right off like super easily. All I had was black, so it um, does work for positive as well. I also removed the wiring harness with the relay and the switch from the cube light cut it right there and now we just have a straight black and red wire coming directly from the cube light there on the passenger side as well as the driver's side. Now plug that directly into the control box right here. And then this wiring right here goes into, I tucked it behind this piece here, underneath that plastic trim, all the way down to the driver's side, dumped it and then into the firewall. Alrighty, throw a little windshield light on, spot number one, boom, perfect. And it illuminates right through too. So it's got a little cutouts. Let's turn the side off really quick. Bam, dude. So sick. All 
All right, so we are 100% dialed in. Everything's all connected. Got some zip ties ran to clean things up a little bit and it is functioning as designed. My only complaint though, I have a small complaint. Well, actually two. And that's the fact that you can't use the cover that the fuse panel here came with to cover up all that. Just not, doesn't look that good, I think, but I guess the worst thing in the world. But yeah, once you start running the cables to it, positive in the ground and stuff like that. And this uh, cable that runs to the switch panel, you can't run the cover, it hides all the fuses and stuff like that. So it's one thing, but also too, there's a cover that goes over the breaker that I can't use anymore because it leads to my second little complaint there. And that's that the uh, battery cable, the connector came right apart from the cable. So I had to buy a new one from Walmart. That's why it's black because they didn't have a red one in stock. So we have a black one now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my only thing, but aside from that, everything's functioning perfectly. And this is dude so much better than running a bunch of wires to the battery, grounding them, and then running all those wires through the firewall to multiple switches inside of the truck. This is awesome. And two, it's gonna make wiring up new accessories in the future a breeze because now they just go directly into those posts right there, just like how I did with the, those two red wires and the two black wires there. Um, coming from the cube lights. So two 5 amp fuses, we have two 10 amp fuses, two 20 amp fuses and two 30 amp fuses. And if you blow a fuse, the red lights right there will illuminate, letting you know that a fuse has been blown and that's why the accessory is no longer working. But yeah, there you guys have it. Everything's all hooked up, dude. This is great. I'm loving it. Cruising on to the inside of the truck. Here is the switch panel looking good, dude. It's just, it's such a nice look. And it looks not super aftermarket either because the finish on it matches pretty well with the interior of my truck. That nice black texture type finish goes really well with my interior. So one cool feature about the switch panel is it does have a memory function to it. So if we turn on one, or two or three or however many ones we want to turn on, we can turn them all off with the center button right there. And if we turn it back on using the same button, it remembers which exact switches we're on and turns those ones back on, which is pretty cool. Also too, it does have a momentary mode as well as a strobe mode, which is pretty cool. What momentary mode means is we can turn any one of these switches into a momentary switch, which means that that switch will only have power when you hold it, as opposed to tapping it and it staying on like that. It'll only give it power when you actually hold the button, which is good for things like a horn, for example, or you know things you only want to have power while you're holding the button. But I'm mostly curious about the strobe mode because that sounds pretty cool. So we hold the on off for three to five seconds, then press on off for one second, and then press on off again for one second, and then click the button that you need to go into strobe mode, press on off for three to five seconds to confirm. Let's give it a shot. So on off for three to five seconds, and then it'll flash, hit it for one more second. Now it's flashing faster. That's probably the momentary mode setting, and then hit it one more time for one second, and that is the strobe light setting. So we'll turn on the windshield lights, hit it for three to five seconds again to lock it in, and then now we should have it set to strobe light. Wow. That is hilarious. I mean, I wouldn't call that a strobe as much as I would call that like a flash or like a, a hazard light maybe, which is actually even slower than a hazard light. But there you guys have strobe mode right there. That's pretty funny. Back into the setting. One second and then one second. Hit it again and then lock it in. And then just like that, back to solid on mode. So dude, this entire thing is awesome because it's gonna make wiring new accessories in the future an absolute breeze. And it just makes things look so much better inside of the truck. I'm hyped on just the appearance of it. It looks great and very convenient. I was gonna put the entire control panel um, on the left side here, but in this truck right here, this part of the dash is kind of angled off to the left side. So it didn't like look very flush and I'm right-handed as well. So that was like the perfect spot to put it right there. And it's got a nice swiveling mount so you can angle it how you want it so yeah overall a very nice product i will have this linked in the description below for you guys definitely check it out but it's pretty much a wrap for you guys for tonight so hope you guys enjoy but that's all i have for now I'll see you guys very soon until then peace out